Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video. I've got this weird old table that I found on Facebook marketplace that someone painted half of it, just the top, and the paint is supposed to imitate stone I think, so it's got texture, but this table has lots of issues. There are some bits that are broken, lots of missing pieces of veneer, and generally it just needs a lot of TLC. Looks like there was an apron or something attached underneath, but it's completely missing, so I can only guess. To make it easier for myself, I'm going to take the legs off. It will also make gluing these two boards together much easier. I'm just using my marking knife to have a gap between those two boards so I can get some glue in and that's way so much glue but oh well. I'll clean it up in a minute. This is the main problem. As you can see, there's a huge crack and fortunately, there are only small bits of wood missing. So just gluing these parts together and using some wood filler should do the trick. Because of the shape of the top, I couldn't simply use a clamp to clamp those two boards together, so I temporarily attached two pieces of plywood by using CA glue and activator, and that gave me a nice and flat surface for my clamp. And when everything was dry, as you can see, it was pretty easy to get those pieces of plywood off. Okay, let's take the paint off. I was actually quite curious to see what's underneath. I knew it was some sort of veneer, but I didn't know what kind. And because the base of this table is not veneered, it's just mahogany, or actually I think it's a mix of mahogany and sapiri. I just wanted to see what I was working with. I used carbide scraper and a card scraper or a furniture scraper, I think some people call it, to remove the varnish and it came off quite easily. I was very careful with the corners because the veneer was quite fragile and lots of pieces were missing, so I didn't want to damage it anymore. And when I was done with that, the shop inspector came to give me the initial approval for the project. There were lots of dents and scratches in the veneer and some of them were quite deep so I decided to use some moisture and just a regular iron to raise the grain and make it easier for myself to sand the veneer. When you think about it, this is what plants do. They transport water from the roots to the top of the plant and that's what happens when you apply water to the wood grain. It absorbs it and it expands and even though it's not alive anymore, it 
you know, this still works. So when you have a dent, you put in some water, add some heat to make it a bit quicker and it expands, it raises the grains and it makes it easier to sand so you don't risk sanding through the veneer. And this way you can fix quite a lot of scratches and dents. I also use some transparent wood glue and some sawdust to help me fill in those little gaps between panels and the veneer. I could have used wood filler but this just looks better because you know the sawdust comes from the wood that you're working with so it's the same color. These are all the pieces of veneer that I have left over from previous projects plus some veneer that I buy and I didn't have anything that would exactly match the veneer on this table for obvious reasons because this is very irregular and unusual but I decided to go with a piece of walnut veneer because it already had some vertical stripes that kind of matched what was on the veneer and I knew that with a little bit of help and some tricks I could make it work. There were lots of very small imperfections in the veneer and I didn't want to replace them with veneer because I don't think that would have actually looked better so I just used some wood filler and for the pieces that were loose, I use CA glue and activator to attach them. I'm not going to show you all the repairs because there were just too many of them, but that's basically what I did. If there was a gap like this one, or maybe a bit smaller, I used a piece of veneer and if it was something very tiny, I just used wood filler. As you can imagine, when you work with old furniture and you source it from places like Facebook Marketplace, you can't exactly pick and choose and sometimes there just isn't anything interesting available and that's kind of what it feels like that the last month or so has been like but i have found some pretty interesting pieces and the next couple projects will be very cool so stay tuned for that and as always i wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports the channel because this means a lot whether it's via buy me a coffee by hitting the super thanks button or simply by liking commenting or subscribing it really means a lot and I really appreciate it I'm not just saying that and for those of you guys who don't know subscribing is free but the reason people always ask for that is because I think that sometimes YouTube just unsubscribes you from the channel that you used to watch because that happened to me and things that I used to watch a lot I just don't see any videos anymore so I need to search for them specifically otherwise I won't find them and obviously with the algorithm, it just helps to place my video amongst all the millions of other videos and help people find it. So yeah, thank you for that. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, you know that I often use whatever is available when I'm sanding or removing varnish and in many cases like this when you have irregular shapes and like very difficult to reach places I just use whatever works so there is no wrong and right method and you know works for me so you do you if you think that there is a better way but that's just what I do I've always found it quite interesting and slightly amusing how people get upset about doing things certain way when it comes to woodworking I mean come on this is just a piece of furniture that you're working with and you're trying to do your best not everyone is a trained woodworker 
and even if you are there's not necessarily just one way of doing things just do your best as long as you're happy with the results 2000 years later This is probably a good example of how you can do the same thing in many different ways and some people would simply use paint stripper and a brush and try to do it this way but not everyone wants to pay for paint stripper or deal with the chemicals or has a way to dispose of it so I try to show many different ways of doing the same thing so people in different circumstances can do the same thing. There was a piece of this decorative element missing so I used my dental tool and a little bit of wood filler and I shaped it to match the rest of those beads and it worked. Again, just one way of doing it. Those screws were a bit rusty so I just used a wire brush to clean them up and make them look a bit shinier because I was not going to take that piece apart. For those of you who say that it takes a long time between videos, this is why. I can't really get anything done because of all those cats. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love them but yeah they do come around quite often and um, they distract me from work and as you can see I absolutely hate it. <laughs> This bottom stretcher thing had a very irregular shape so I just used my sandblaster to clean it up because otherwise it would have been quite difficult to do it with a sandpaper. Maybe not difficult but more time consuming. I find this oddly satisfying. It feels a little bit like doing dental work, but it worked very well and yeah, it was actually quite fun. And pay attention to different colors of the wood because this will matter later on. As you know, I'm the biggest fan of sanding, so this is just one of my cool little tools that comes very handy for areas like this one. Six and a half hours later. After getting the final approval from the cut inspector, I used 180 grit sandpaper to get rid of all the scratches and the leftover glue and sawdust and some wood filler. There were still some tiny bits of white paint deep in the grain so I just used this very precise dental tool to get rid of them. 
And for those couple deeper holes in the veneer, I just used some UV resin and UV light to cure it and that was a pretty simple fix. For the edge of the table, to make sure I didn't go through the veneer, I did all the sanding by hand. And as it's usually the case, I like to sand and clean the bottoms of all the pieces that I work with, so that's what I did for this one. And now I can address the veneer repairs that I've done and try to blend them in even more. So as you remember I used walnut veneer for the repairs and the veneer has different color from the veneer used on this table and to help it blend in a bit more I'm just using some water-based wood dye and giving it some color. And as you can see this is already getting much closer to the rest of the veneer but I'm not done yet. I did that for all the repairs that I've made as a base for the next step. So this is almost dry and it's looking pretty good. I mean, not exactly the same color, but it's pretty close. I may do another coat. So this is the big piece that I replaced and it's already pretty nicely blended in. I mean, you can hardly tell that this is a different piece of veneer, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just kind of try to imitate the same vertical lines in different shades to blend it in even more. So I'm just gonna add a drop of black into this dye just to get a different shade. And just so you know, I cannot draw to save my life. So this is something that I've never felt comfortable doing, but there is really not a right or wrong way of doing it as long as it looks kind of like the rest of the veneer. If you didn't know this has been replaced, you would not know. This looks really good. I'm pretty happy with it. This is wet because I just applied mineral spirit or white spirit just to see what it looks like and see if there are any scratches. And there were some patches of light wood, but it's not because I sanded through the veneer. It just looks like there are layers of color in the grain. And I don't know, it just looks a bit odd. So I'm gonna try and fix this with a little bit of dark mahogany stain and I've been just basically very lightly trying to add some color into these patches and um, in case this works I just want to film it so you guys know what I did if it doesn't work oh well it already looks much better because it was definitely lighter and you could easily see it. It's much, much better now. So I hope it looks okay once I apply the finish. And I'm also blending the edges with 
a piece of cloth that has some white spirit on it just to make sure there's no sharp edges let's hope it works I couldn't decide for the longest time what to do as far as the finish but I ended up choosing polyurethane and I probably should have used wood filler but I didn't have any so I just applied polyurethane directly to the wood and because it's quite porous you can see the grain despite me using five coats of polyurethane and I wanted to get this video out so I didn't have more time to apply another couple coats and I will do it after the video is out but just so you understand that if you can see a little bit of wood grain showing through the finish that's why but it is very glossy it is very nice and shiny and I'm quite happy with it If you remember I mentioned that the base is made from different colors of wood and I'll address that in a minute but I'm just spraying a base coat of polyurethane first. As you can see I applied several coats of polyurethane and it's looking pretty gorgeous. I did give it a little bit of light sanding between the second and the third coat just to make sure there were no specks of dust or anything stuck in the finish. And this is my plan how to fix the problem of different colors of wood. I'm gonna use lacquer toner and I'm gonna start with mahogany color just to give those bottom pieces a little bit of red because otherwise it would have been quite difficult to blend them in with the rest of it. And then I'm gonna use walnut color on top of mahogany and this just gave me the best result and this is not an exact science and you basically try and see what works and I was pretty happy with how it came out. I was basically going back and forth between those two colors until I was pretty happy with the blend and I felt like all the pieces looked the same. I'm pretty much done with the project and before you see the final results as always comment like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you're feeling super generous you can hit the super thanks button and I'll love you forever. You guys have a wonderful week and see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.